Well, I hope this year when we get our practice done and pays off. Last year we did this practice routine and I had to cancel out on the bear hunt because of work. Well, this year I got more work than I had last year. But you know what? Work is going to take a back seat to this year. I'm going to do a little living along with doing a little work. We'll be in Nipigon, Canada with Bob Bearman a week from the night. And I'm going to shoot a couple of arrows out of the elevated stand. Be a skid steer this year. And um, it's about 8 o'clock, low light. Try to try to uh, reenact what you're going to do. It's not going to be a sunny, bright sun over the sun over your head. Low light, somewhat. And uh, so anyhow, I'm going to get up there and fling an arrow. And uh, my bear, it came into the bait. And um, you try to make that your practice as realistic as you can. That way you can get into the mode. And when you get up there to make that shot. Psych yourself up that that target's got a heartbeat. Just don't be shooting at a target and going, oh, well, so what? I, got, I can redo and redo. Make that first shot count because that's what it's going to be in the bush up there in Canada. So really get into it. Settle down when you get up on stand and make your practice as real and feel real as you possibly can. Play like you were playing at Cowboys and Indians when you was a little kid. So uh, let's see what happens. This is real critical. Even you know this is in your backyard. Put your mind in the bush. Make this as real as you can and accept the results. If you screw the shot up here, that's probably what you'd have done in the bush. So I'm on camera, so it puts a lot of pressure on me, and I like that. I have to make the right shot. So let's sit back and see what happens. All right, as you see, 100 grain muzzy, three blades, right on the money. 70 pound reflex bow, uh, carbon arrow, got it taken care of. If you come around to the back side, you'll see where that exit is. Right there at the end of my finger is the tip of the muzzy. Uh, came right out in the heart in the lung area. That bear wouldn't have went 50 yards. That's the kind of shot placement you want. Realism. You want to make your practice as realistic as you can. I cannot emphasize that. Psych yourself up. Calm down. Put pressure on yourself that this is the real deal. That way, when the real deal does show up, you'll have already experienced that blood pressure rise, uh, that tension that can build up, and the let go of your fingers or your release. Uh, one of these nice targets, they're relatively expensive, but then again, you got a lot of money tied up in the hunt. So this is your practice. You're only going to get to one shot probably, and uh, you want to make it good. So as, as real as you can make it, it's more beneficial to you. Next time you see me with a bear, it's going to be in Nipigon, Canada on the real deal. See you up there. Well, you want to make sure you're doing some practice in midday. You want to make that a one and done shot. And concentrate. A lot of people think that because they got a bear over a bait, they shoot too quick. And a bear. Just take your time when you make your shot, and uh, you'll be a lot better off than just swinging and winging.
One shot, one dead bear. Yeah, you people back in Iowa, you don't have to do this. But there was a couple gentlemen from Iowa that learned the hard way last night. Without this and without this, that's a $130 fine that you owe the country of Canada. Uh, you don't put this in a case, transporting it, I don't know what the fine is, but it's a fine. Uh, matter of fact, if you go out in the bush before before hunt, if, um, before the legal season, this has to be in a, going to your blind it, where you stand. It has to be encased. Coming back, if you come back after the season closed, it has to be encased. Make sure you read your rules. Without this, 130 bucks. Even though you're hunting over bait. You noticed all these blueberries in here? There's blueberries in the poop, and there's blueberries all over. So you're in competition at this time of year with Mother Nature with her abundance of natural food. So you're putting out an artificial bait, but the bears already know where the natural baits are. So just don't think it's a given because you're sitting on a bait. Because they can go down here and eat these berries all day long, which are high in what nutrients that they need at this time of year. So, just something to keep in mind. The better the blueberries crop, the harder the bait is. Okay, what I've tried to do here, I've got the barrel up higher. I've noticed when those bears come in, they want to lay down and eat on the ground. Because their neck's too short. So it's easier for them to get down on the ground if that, if that grain's on the ground. So I've got the barrel elevated, and I turned it more so they have to quarter away from me. I put those logs on there hoping that they will come in and have to come around those logs and get to a quartering away shot. We'll see how that pans out tonight. Now, the stand is no more than 17 yards away. So it's not like it's a real long shot, but this will help get those bears up off the ground. And uh, if that does that, then they'll, they'll have to come in, come down that trail right there and come around that bush. Now they can probably knock that barrel down if they get real aggressive, which they probably will. But it's just an attempt to get them up off the ground. That way they have to feed standing up because if they lay down and feed you don't have any shots at all so sometimes you have to manipulate your uh, barrel sight you can't just you know the outfitter does all he can to get these going but you have to fine tune them on your own and that's part of the interaction on the hunt so uh, the more you can help yourself the more success you're going to have so, so we'll see what happens
Well, I believe. Uh, let me see what time it is. It's 9:20. Now it looks light out here, but in the bush, it's actually darker. And you've seen that bear action. Had I wanted to shot my bear, you've seen I had plenty of opportunities. Had one bear come in six, seven times from seven o'clock to nine. Uh, when they come to that bait, they've already committed themselves and they're focusing on eating. So for you new beginners that are just come up here to hunt, settle down. That's not a white-tailed deer. It came to a location, it's going to eat. You can actually do something on them bears. You know, you don't, and it, it, like I said, the best thing to do is let the first bears that you see walk by unless it's a jumbo dumbo. If you don't know what a big bear looks like, just settle down and uh, hunt for a couple nights. You don't have to kill and think it's got to shoot the first bear. There's too many bears up here in Nipigon. Uh, and if you do go home without a bear and you videotape it, that's just as good and you don't have to cut and gut and uh, brag and drag. You know, you can take that video home and say, I could have shot that bear possibly. But you also notice you got to take time and let those shots materialize. They lay down, they get up, they sit down, they do a lot of things. That bear come back seven times. You would have had a sh shot sooner or later. But out of that seven times, there were only a few shots. So don't rush the shot. Just settle down, enjoy the nature, watch the bear, and uh, you'll learn a lot from them. But if you shoot the first one, get all excited, you, you know, something bad's gonna happen. Now, the reason I come out at this time, like I said, it's dark in the bush, too dark for what I feel comfortable with, and then you're gonna have to follow up in the dark. The bear comes in at seven, eight o'clock, and you got plenty of good time, whack it. It gets past that nine o'clock hour, you know, but 9.15, you, you know, you might kill a bear, but you also might have a bad experience. It's not worth it. So uh, that's it from the non-typical Norwalkian.